In today's video, I'm discussing the unhealed empath. You don't want to miss this. Let's dive in. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and the creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. If you'd like to learn more about how to become a coaching client, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. So let's talk about what it means to be an unhealed empath. And I can tell you that I'm well qualified to cover this subject because frankly, this was the story of my life for a long, long time before I became willing to do whatever it would take to heal. Now, to begin with, it's important to understand that empaths landed on the planet wired the way that we are, sensitive, highly empathic, intuitive, natural born healers, and potential light workers, if we can find our way out of the dark. In fact, in my view, that is at least one reason why we're here, to find our way out of the dark so that we can help others do the same in our own unique way. But we can't do that or do that well if what ails us and holds us back remains unhealed within us. So on that note, let's start with the fact that empaths are natural born healers. Now, obviously, this is a good thing, unless, of course, as I said, we have yet to do our own healing and recovery work. Trying to help and heal others from a place of not having done our own work is out of integrity and alignment, and therefore isn't going to work well for anyone. And Lord knows there is no shortage of unhealed healers out there talking the talk but not walking the walk. And frankly, I think they're pretty easy to spot if you're paying attention and know what to look for. Now that aside, the reality is that because the human race has been perpetrated on, manipulated, and fully traumatized to the degree that it has been for as long as it has been, many, if not most of us, grew up in some degree of family dysfunction. Even if our parents or primary caretakers were well-intended, even if it all looked good to the outside world, the dysfunction was there and we were harmed as a result. Some of us more than others for sure, but this is or was the reality for most of us to some degree or another. And for those of us who are more sensitive, more highly empathic, who feel things like everything deeply, we were deeply affected. Deeply affected in ways we may or may not even realize. And how these effects tend to manifest is in codependent thinking and behaving. To varying degrees, of course. Remember, codependency is on a spectrum with different flavors and manifestations no different than the spectrum of destructive narcissist personality pattern. These are never black or white issues, friends, but rather a spectrum or continuum. Now that said, for clarity, my definition of codependency is a fundamental breakdown in the relationship with self that then extends to maladaptive ways of relating with others. It all begins inside of us. It all starts here. Ross Rosenberg calls it self-love deficit disorder, and that's exactly what it is. And the antidote to what ails an unhealed empath is self-love. And we grow our genuine and authentic sense of self-love and self-trust by healing what we've been unable or what unwilling to face to this point. And we do that by embarking on and committing to a healing and recovery journey from codependency. Make sense? So when discussing the unhealed empath, it's important to recognize that we are very much discussing the untreated codependent and how this codependency, this self-love deficit disorder, manifests is through some very specific symptoms. And here are the classic signs and symptoms of an unhealed empath. To begin with, they only feel good when running around town wearing a cape. So what I mean by that is running around town, helping, fixing, rescuing, saving, giving, 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 and to their own detriment, is absolutely the name of the game for the unhealed empath. Now, what's really going on with this is, as long as I'm running around focused on you, helping you, fixing you, saving you, attempting to heal, rescue, and give everything I've got to you, I actually don't have to stand still long enough to feel my own feelings and therefore deal with my own stuff. And some people spend their entire lives running from their own trauma, masquerading as the great helper, when more often than not, from this place of being unhealed themselves, what they are really doing is enabling and controlling. 
while their own lives become progressively more and more unmanageable and painful, and they don't understand why. Next, the unhealed empath seeks external validation and approval. In addition to running around town with their cape on, masquerading as the great helper, the unhealed empath does a lot of what they do trying to earn validation and approval to make up for the lack of self-worth and self-esteem they suffer from because they don't have, they have yet rather, to do their own work. So rather than stand still long enough to feel and deal for real, they go through life literally prostituting themselves and their souls for the scraps of love and acceptance from people who fully do not have those things to give. Painful. Next, the unhealed empath is a people pleaser. People pleasing is also the name of the game for the unhealed empath. So much so, when they walk into a room, they don't know how they feel until they know how someone else feels. In particular, whoever happens to be the most dominant or alpha narcissist in the dynamic. An unhealed empath finds themselves dancing like a puppet on strings to the tune of someone else's nonsense, chaos and drama, in the hopes of keeping them just happy enough and not rocking the boat or upsetting the apple cart. This is how the unhealed empath sells off little pieces of their soul while getting little to nothing in return, not least of which respect. They don't respect themselves and others don't respect them because they are so caught up in people-pleasing thinking and behaving. Which leads to my next point. The unhealed empath really struggles with boundaries. Being the people-pleasers that they are, they can't set a limit or boundary without tremendous discomfort without feeling guilt, fear, shame, or anxiety. And if this is you, this is not your fault. You can't possibly know how to set boundaries if it was neither modeled for you or if you weren't taught that you have rights. Like, for example, the right to say no or no more, no matter who it is. And although it's not your fault, it is fully your responsibility now. Your responsibility to do your inner work and fortify yourself to the point where you can begin to set healthy limits and boundaries, in particular with the difficult or toxic people in your life, without all the discomfort, fear, guilt, shame, and anxiety. Now, you may need some help, guidance, and support to get there, but you can get there. Now, comment below and let me know whether or not you can relate to any of this. Let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Now, this is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself and your healing and recovery journey. If you want the pain to stop, you want to find a way out of the fog, confusion, self-doubt, fear, and anxiety brought on by having been exposed to empathy impaired emotional manipulators who feel entitled to hurt you, and worse yet, blame you for the hurt they cause? If that's you, the link is in the description below this video. The unhealed empath also has a tendency to lose themselves in others. Unhealed empaths don't really know who they are. They certainly don't understand the full depth of their gifts and personal power. Their personal identity is shaky and fractured at best. And this, combined with their lack of boundaries, means they fully lose themselves in others. They don't know who they are. They don't yet understand where I end and you begin. What is and it is not theirs to take on. So this identity-less, boundary-less, and codependent way of going through life makes them an ideal target for narcissistic abuse in every area of their life. And for this reason, the unhealed empath really struggles with self-doubt. They lack self-confidence and confidence in themselves and are perpetually doubting and second-guessing themselves. They don't trust themselves. They don't believe they can trust themselves to make the right decisions. Furthermore, the unhealed empath identifies as being less than. Your subconscious identity is the core fundamental driver of your reality the quality of your experiences and the relationships you have, for better or worse, 
When your core fundamental subconscious belief system is you are unworthy or less than because that was the message you received one way or another in the first five to seven years of life, you are going to struggle and struggle great big huge as an empath on this planet. You are quite literally living in an inverted reality where everything is upside down, inside out and backwards, believing all manner of lies about who you are and who you are not. Needless to say, this can make for one very painful and difficult road to travel. Now the good news is you can change all of this. You just have to do the right work to heal the old wounding and trauma, shift your subconscious programming and start operating from a new identity. One more in line with the truth of who you are, who you were always meant to be, who you came to the planet to be. And if you want help with that, the links are in the description below this video. Another sign of an unhealed empath is that you don't fit in. Now, in my view, fitting in on this planet is highly overrated. Just look around. What's deemed normal on planet Earth is often nothing short of insane. So not fitting in here, in my opinion, is actually a very good thing. Moreover, if you don't feel like you belong, that is very likely another piece of the puzzle as to why you're here. There's a saying. When you are born into a world that you don't fit into, it's because you're here to change it. True story. Empaths have the power to heal, evolve, and grow into what's called a super empath. And if you want to learn more about the super empath, you can watch this video here and this video here. That said, if you're highly empathic, and have never felt at home here, know that it is very likely that you're a mission soul what some would call a light worker. You have work to do here and it is vital that you do your healing and recovery work so you can get about the business of doing what you came to the planet to do. And if any of this sounds like you, it's also quite likely that you were cast as the family scapegoat in a dysfunctional family system. Every dysfunctional family needs a scapegoat. A place, or in this case, a person, where the other members who are, at the very least, empathy impaired, if not lacking in conscience entirely, can cast their own sins, guilt, fear, shame, self-loathing, defects of character and relationship crimes, onto a chosen target to unburden themselves. Now, this happens every day in sick families all over the globe, friends. It is a very common phenomenon, whether you are awake to it or not, or whether or not you've had the experience. The person cast as the family scapegoat is the one who is blamed for all the pain and shame of the family. Even the mountains of drama and trauma that took place long before the scapegoat was even on the scene. For real. In addition, the person who is cast as the family scapegoat tends to not only be the most highly empathic, but also the one most likely to speak the truth. The one most likely to see the dysfunction and insanity for what it is and either push back, rebel, or take it on and fully reflect it back to the family at large, even if done subconsciously. There's nothing easy or pain-free about having been cast as the family scapegoat, no question. Having toxic bullies feel entitled to project all of their own disowned shadow self onto you while convincing everyone in sight and anyone who will listen what a problem you are, running the narrative that you are all the things they themselves in fact are, they lie and you're a liar, they steal, you're a thief, they're a pedophile or the sick chick protecting the pedophile, and you can't be trusted around children? Sick stuff. And it happens in families all over the world, day in and day out. Now here's the good news. The truth is, the scapegoat is actually the strongest one of the tribe. That's right. Not just the most empathic, the most sensitive, but also the most resilient. And once healed and empowered, without question, the most bulletproof. Never ever underestimate the unhealed empath or the family scapegoat, more often than not, one and the same, because the reality is they are more often than not the one who carries the most truth and the most light and hands down the most love. They are the ones with the spiritual gifts. And in a dysfunctional family system where people are lacking in empathy and conscience, this is precisely what makes them prime target number one. So if this is you, again, it is vital that you do your healing and recovery work so you can become the you you were always meant to be, living the life you actually claim here to live. 
You didn't come here to be the emotional punching bag, dumping ground, or garbage bin of a sick family system, a sick mob of deeply unconscious, harmful, and destructive people. You came here for more. It's time now. And last but not least, the unhealed empath will often have issues with self-medicating. If there's a lot of unresolved trauma, there's likely a tendency to self-medicate or numb out one way or another. There may even be a history of substance abuse as a means of coping with the emotional trauma and the weight of the pain and the baggage that you're carrying. I get it. I have so been there. Believe me. Here's the thing. You can't heal for real. You can't step into your divine mission, purpose, and calling if you are drunk, stoned, or otherwise numbed out and sedated. Period. So what's the solution? Heal. It's that simple. Get serious about your personal healing and recovery work, starting with sober recovery if that's what you need. Get on purpose, on path, and on mission. Our world needs you happy, healthy, whole, healed, and anchoring in the highest frequencies that you came here with. It's time now. And on that note, I'm going to call it a wrap. But before I go, I have a special announcement to make. You might be interested to know that the Ascension class is open for enrollment, and I am so beyond excited to bring you this next level of growth, expansion, and evolution that is this transformational coaching program. If you want to go deep with me into the work of reinventing yourself after narcissistic abuse, then this is for you. Be sure to click on the link in the description below this video to apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team.